So, welcome back. We have been looking at a subset of logic, subset of first order logic called horn clause logic and we say that horn clauses are those clauses which have at most one positive literal. You can have any number of negative literals. Then we also said that a prolog program is a positive definite horn clause which means that there has to be at least a positive literal in every sentence. So, what about negative horn clauses? What, what is the meaning of negative horn clauses? Let us look at that. A horn clause with no positive literal is a negative clause. Obviously, by definition, a positive clause has at least one positive literal. If it does not have any positive literal, then it is a negative clause. A prologue, such clauses come only from the negated goal or the query. So, the program def itself is positive definite horn clauses, but the goal is negated and added to that. Uh, when we talk of resolution, when we talk of backward chaining, we do not do that, but then we have to distinguish between goals and facts. When we talk about resolution, we negate the goal and treat it as any other fact essentially and then if you can derive the null clause, then you are done. Essentially. So, the in prologue, such clauses come only from negated goal or the query essentially. The null clause or the empty clause is by definition a negative clause. It has no positive literal and it evaluates to false that we have seen and that is why this whole knowledge base becomes inconsistent once you can derive the null clause. The resolution rule has the following possibilities. Either the two clauses can be both positive or both negative or one is positive and one is negative. What happens in these cases? When you resolve a positive clause with a positive clause, you will get another positive clause because remember that in the resolution step or in the resolution rule, you take one positive literal from one clause with a matching negative literal in the other clause, cancel these two and put everything together. So, of the two positive literals which existed in those two positive clauses because both are positive, one will get cancelled and the other one will go into the resolvent. So, if we resolve two positive clauses, then you will get the positive clause. So, this is an example here. So, uh, positive the fact that I have drawn it in red is a positive clause. So, you can see that this is positive here and this is positive here and in the resultant there is one positive clause. If you resolve a positive clause with a negative clause, you will get a negative clause because uh, there was only one positive literal and that got cancelled. As you can see here, uh, there is one positive literal here S of x and that got cancelled and uh, what you are left with uh, T of x or Q not of T of x or not of Q of x and this got cancelled with this essentially. So, if you resolve a positive clause and a negative clause, then you will get a negative clause and clearly you cannot resolve two negative clauses because you need that literal to cancel from the other side essentially. Now, a derivation is called an SLD derivation. A prologue program is a set of positive definite clauses. This SLD definition of SLD derivation is more general than, than horn clauses, but uh, we are interested in positive definite clauses, uh, horn clauses. The negative goal is the only negative clause. And SLD derivation, so S stands for selected literal, L stands for linear structure, and D stands for definite clauses. So, when you are working with definite clauses, and you only select a particular kind of literal, then you will get a linear structure in the derivation and that is called the SLD derivation. The first resolvent has one parent from the goal, the negated goal and one from the program which is a positive definite clause. So, the goal is a negative clause, the other clause is from the positive definite set. So, the resolvent will be negative and this negative clause which is resolved will be the next parent 
that is the property of SLD de resolution. So, each resolvent in the derivation is negative because you are resolving a positive clause with a negative clause and this amounts to doing backward chaining. So, it is like going from goal to sub goal to sub goal to sub goal essentially. So, SLD res resolution with horn clauses is equal to backward chaining, is equivalent to backward chaining. The latest resolvent, the last thing that you produced becomes one of the parents and the other parent is again a positive clause from the rest of the program basically. So, you are basically backward chaining through the program. This is the structure of the SLD de derivation with horn clauses. The gray clauses are the positive clauses, the blank boxes are the negative clauses, the yellow one or the orange one is the gold clause. So, you keep deriving a sequence of negative clauses and you can see that this is like backward chaining that you go from the goal to sub goal, from sub goal to the next sub goal, from next sub goal to the next sub goal and so on and so forth. So, I have not written what are those clauses, but this is the structure of a SLD derivation. Now, it has been, it can be shown that any derivation and this is true for horn clauses, any derivation which has a positive resolvent can be transformed into an equivalent derivation without any positive resolvents. So, if you look at this derivation on the left hand side, you have not E or C, you have not F or not C or D and you have not D or not E. From that, you take two positive clauses and resolve them, you get another positive clause and then of course, you resolve it with another clause and you get the negative clause. Instead, what you could have done is you could have first resolved the, for the topmost negative clause with the positive clause which is here and you would have got a negative clause and you resolve this negative clause with the other positive clause and you will get a negative clause. So, it can be shown that uh, the derivation of a negative clause is always possible where all the clauses generated are negative on the way. So, here is the SLD de derivation, derivation of the, uh, the Alice problem as you can see here. Uh, we have only focused on the positive definite clauses in, in, in the Alice knowledge base. There were some other clauses, but we have not used them as you can see here. And uh, the negation of the goal is, uh, so from T you went to T or not R or not S then you get to not p or not s and so on and you will remember this was the pattern that we did in backward chaining. We started with the goal set of with t, then we added the two other clauses and so on. So, you started with t, when you, when you are not negating the goal, then you reduce it to, because this was R and S implies T, we actually reduce it to R and T. That is what we did in backward chaining. From T, we went to R and S, sorry. So, from T, we went to R and S and of course, in clause form, negation of R and S is not R or not S and then we did this process. So, these thick arrows here show that you are doing something equivalent to backward chaining, but what you are really doing is SLD resolution here. Let us look at this problem that we had seen earlier. So, if you remember this problem uh, in the domain of people, uh, where I have changed some names. So, there may be a mismatch of names in the figure and in the diagram. But uh, person, so what was given to us was that John is married, Jack is not married, the stuff in the blue is a knowledge base, uh, Anne is looking at John and Jack is looking at Anne and we had to show that there is 
an unmarried person looking at a married person that is the goal and the negation of the goal is here we saw this derivation we didn't draw the graph but this is a graph for the derivation and you can see that this is not an sld resolution so the connection that we want to explore is the fact that sld resolution is associated with backward chaining but then we also made the statement that backward chaining is not complete and therefore we said look at this resolution method it's complete that for this particular query that we had seen uh, uh, that we had seen we could uh, arrive we could derive the null clause so resolution method was complete whereas backward chaining was not complete now this is just a little bit of point to think about that i will show you a derivation which matches the pattern of the res, res, the sld derivation so here is the this thing uh, if we just rearrange so if you look at this knowledge base and the query you will see that this is the same knowledge base and the same query the knowledge base says that john is married uh, jack is not married and is looking at john and jack is looking at ann and the query was the same that an unmarried person is looking at a married person so with the same knowledge base you can do an resolution which looks like an sld resolution you start with a negative clause produce another negative clause use that to produce another negative clause again use the resolvent to produce an, a negative clause and again use the resolvent to produce another negative clause and again use that resolvent to produce the null clause which is also we said a negative clause so this looks very much like backward chaining essentially you started with a goal and a sub goal and sub goal and so on the structure is that you started with a negative clause produce a negative resolvent and kept producing negative resolvents till you derive the empty clause and here no there is a structure which looks like that so is there some problem in our earlier statement that backward chaining is not complete uh, and we have said that this kind of resolution is backward chaining and here we have this kind of resolution where we do a sequence of negative clauses and produce this clause the answer is no it is not conflicting with our statement that backward chaining is incomplete and resolution method is complete because backward chaining should begin with the goal and here we are not we are beginning with a negative clause so that's why i have written here that this is an sld like derivation it is not an sld derivation in the sld derivation you have to begin with a goal clause which becomes a negative clause and then uh, you and then you do this backward backward uh, chaining process essentially so first of all this does not conform to a prolog program because if this is a fact not married jack we said that this kind of things are not allowed because only positive definite clauses are allowed in prolog so this cannot be a fact essentially and uh, the goal the negative go negative goal is here is a positive clause which is also not allowed in prolog uh, the goal the negative the goal is just one positive literal and uh, its negation has to be a negative literal so even though this looks a little bit like the sld like resolution it is not solving the problem that we wanted to solve essentially it is still showing that this augmented knowledge base is inconsistent it is deriving the null clause it's also deriving it with the pattern which looks like sld resolution but what i will show you in a moment is that the augmented knowledge base that we are talking about is being interpreted in a totally different way essentially 
So, this is an SLD like resolution, it is not SLD resolution because we are not starting with the gold flows. So, this statement that we said that 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 forward chaining and backward chaining are incomplete, we will uh, stick to that. Uh, despite the fact that we have an SLD resolution. So, I should put SLD in quotes here. It is an SLD like resolution. Uh, so, we are not really doing backward chaining in the derivation that we just saw. If it was backward chaining, then this is the problem that we would be addressing. The goal would be show that Jack is married because the negation of the goal would be not married Jack. That is not the problem that we are solving. We, are, we were told that uh, Jack is not married, uh, John is married and some two people were looking at some two other people and then we had to show that an unmarried person was looking at a married person. But if we look at this derivation and think of this as backward chaining, then first of all you have to, uh, to accept the fact that the goal is that Jack is married. Then what does the fact if we treat this uh, clause with three literals as a fact, what is this fact saying? It is saying that for all x for all y, if x is looking at y and y is married, then x is married. So, if x is looking at y and y is married, then x is married. So, this means that only married people can look at married persons. So, clearly this is a totally different problem uh, it, and it is interesting to see that this different problem in this world in which married people can only look at uh, unmarried persons and that is given as a fact with the rest of the facts being same, you can show that Jack is married. But that is a different problem altogether from the original problem that we started with which was a totally different problem. So, it is interesting to see that two different problems can result in the same augmented knowledge base where you take the negation of the goal and add it as a fact. You cannot take the augmented knowledge base and tell it and 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 say what was the not what was the given set of facts and what was the goal unless of course you have this restriction that you are working with prolog like programs which is that the program must be positive definite and the goal must be a single literal essentially. Then of course, in you can see that uh, uh, this single literal must have come from the goal and the rest is the knowledge base. But here we saw that there were two different knowledge bases with two different goals. Uh, one of them was not a single literal in the first original problem and uh, that they reduced to the same augmented knowledge base where the negative of the goal was added. So, obviously, both the augmented knowledge bases have, can, can have a derivation. So, there is nothing surprising about it, but it does not show that what we did just now is showing that backward chaining can also prove that problem. What we showed instead was that backward chaining can solve some other problem, essentially not the problem that we were interested in. Okay, so, we will stop here and we will come back and uh, uh, take a little bit more look at how prolog or logic programming can be seen as doing computation in general. We have seen how we can do arithmetic. Now, let us look at another example which is not directly to do with arithmetic. So, we will do that in the next session.